Hey guys, this is Alex, the Solve It All Cuber, and today we are going to be solving the 4x4. I am very excited for this. I will tell you it is a difficult solve. Um, it is not easy uh, whatsoever. Uh, there are some algorithms that you're going to have to learn, but using the methods that I'm going to show you, I really think you can get it. Uh, so let's get right into it. So before we get started, uh, I have a couple things to say. First off is that you should uh, already know how to solve the 3x3. Uh, if you do not ha know how to solve the 3x3, go ahead and go to my original videos showing that because it is going to be a thousand times easier to learn to solve this once you've already learned the 3x3. And also, uh, some of the steps, I'm just going to say you use this algorithm that you've already learned, and if you haven't learned the 3x3, you're not going to know what I'm talking about. So, uh, the second thing is uh, algorithms. So, obviously, we have to come up with some different uh, terms because there are four rows instead of three, like in the regular. So the way that it's done, actually, is this, uh, just like normal, is R. And, of course, this is L. Uh, but they're capital. And these middle pieces, this would be the R. This uh, slab right here, turning this like that, is R, but it's lowercase r. So uh, this piece right here would be lowercase l to do that. And this piece here would be lowercase u to do that. Uh, and so for the sake of being able to say things easily, uh, I'm just going to call this normal r. When I'm doing it, I'll just say r. Uh, when I do this, I would say little r. And if it was both, I would say both r's. Uh, so just didn't want to confuse you guys with the algorithms. So uh, I'm going to give you a brief overview. Uh, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to turn this into a 3 by 3 and then solve it. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to turn each of these pieces in the center that have four, we're going to solve those first, and that way it'll be like each of these is just a center piece, just acting as one piece. Once we've done that, we're going to pair up each two edges like this, here and here, you know, each and every one. And once we've done that, we'll actually have a 3 by 3 because then we'll just have one center, four edges, and four corners. So it's just like a 3 by 3 uh, So, obviously, First step, get the centers. Uh, so a lot of this is intuitive. It's just a lot of uh, thinking, but I'm going to definitely show you uh, the best methods for doing this. An interesting thing about the corners is that because there's no centerpiece, there's an even number of uh, each way, so there's actually no piece in the center that's fixed. You can choose any side to start with. Uh, the, every piece can move around to any you know spot, so it does not matter what side you try to put the colors on, as long as they are blue, red, yellow, they're in the right positions. So I always start with the white side, so uh, we just have to think about um, how we're going to get the full top. Now the way you want to do this is you want to think in twos, so you want to get uh, two pieces that are right next to each other like this, and another set of two pieces, and just align them. So here's a piece. Um, and this one is on the same side, but it's not right next to it, so it's not going to help us. So here's a piece right here. So say when we want to get this piece next to this one. Well, uh, if we want to rotate this up here, what position do we need to have this in that it's going to go into this slot? Well, you can just imagine, take this and rotate it down. So that needs, this piece needs to be right there. So we're just going to put it there, and then we're going to rotate it back up. And now we have that little set of two. So here's the one other white piece, and the last one is right there. So we have our two up here, and then we have one here and one on the bottom. So we want to put this piece right next to that one, and by rotating it like this, it will. But that also messes up this piece. So uh, there's a lot of moving things out of the way in this solve, and in this case, all you have to do is uh, rotate this out of the way like that, and then we're going to do that again. And now we have that. And so to actually get the four pieces, um, we are going to uh, just align them. So think about, these two need to go here. So we just put them on the right side like that, and then rotate them on the top. Uh, it's that simple. So once we have the white side, the next thing we're going to do is go straight to the yellow side. So even though there's no fixed centers, we know that the yellow side is opposite of the white. So that's going to be up here. And we already have one piece here. So let's just do kind of like what we did with the white and try and get a piece to be paired with it. But this time, from here on out, we have to think about every move we do uh, this way is going to mess up that white. So how are we going to get a piece right next to this? Well, we've got one right here. And so what piece is going to move right there next to it? Well, we want this piece to be there. So we just rotate it once like this. 
and we're going to rotate it up next to it. But remember, we messed up our white. So how do we get the white back there without messing this up? We just rotate that out of the way, okay? Now it's not going to mess that up and put it back. It's very simple. So now we have two yellows in place, and we want to get another uh, pair. So we've got this, and we've got this. So uh, how am I going to get this right next to it? Well, this piece right here would go right there. So let's rotate this into that spot and put it right next to it. And that's not harming the white because uh, we're just moving this way. So the final thing that we have to do is rotate this yellow next to that. But there's a little extra step here. So you think about, you just put that right there. Well, that's all good, but you've messed up your white. And now, no matter which way you rotate this, you're going to take yellow back. So even though it seems counterintuitive, in these cases, what you actually have to do is you have to rotate the other pair in line with where you're going to rotate this one, okay, and do that. And now you've actually pushed that one out of the way, but you've also pushed the white out of the way. So that way, when you rotate your first piece out of the way, and you rotate this back down, you've got that piece back. So that's what you always have to remember. If you want to get this piece to here, don't just put it there because you're going to mess up this. You have to put it where your other pair is, rotate that out of the way, and put the pair back. And that way it'll fix it. So once we have the white and the yellow, you can start next with any color. But I like to go with blue. And if, you, if it makes you feel better, you can have a little reference over here of how the colors are. So there's white, there's yellow, and now we're going to do blue. Um, and right now, it really doesn't matter uh, where we put blue, and you don't have to worry about messing up the others really a lot. So for these pieces down here, we're not going to do uh, finding two pairs and putting them next to each other, because then you're going to be messing with these more. With this one, we're going to do it a little differently, where we're just going to try and get one pair, and then get a, a third piece, and then I'll show you a tiny algorithm for getting the last piece in. So I have two here, and here's a third. So obviously, I can just rotate that right into place like that, and you're not messing anything up. So now we've got these three, and where's the fourth blue? It's right next to there. So uh, what I'm actually going to do is put the blue side on top with the yellow and the white on the sides like this. So we've got uh, the piece that we want to move in towards us. So the blue's on top. The piece we want to move is towards us. What we're going to do is put this piece in the top left, okay? And orient your little three here to the top left, where it's like that, okay? So all you're going to do here is you're going to rotate that third, that extra piece that's sticking out next to that. You're going to rotate this to the right, and you're going to put it back up. It's very simple. Uh, it's very intuitive, so I'm sure you'll be able to figure it out. So you might say, what if I've got my three here, but the last piece is all the way on the other side, and so I can't do that little thing you just showed me because it's on the very bottom. Well, basically, you're just going to do uh, two things. Instead of doing some crazy algorithm that's going to put it all up there, all you have to do is do like I said before, where you have the blue side on top, and then you have that extra piece on the bottom. You're just going to rotate that blue piece up, and then you're going to rotate it out of the way so that you can rotate this back and fix your three there. And then you're back in position. So that way you can just put this in the top left, put this in the top left, and then take your extra and move it down next to that one, move this one into place, and move them back. So, very simple. Uh, now I've got the blue side. Uh, so here's where you might want to have reference, you might not. Um, I kind of like to have a cube next to me just to make sure, okay, white goes there, yellow goes there. If blue's here, to the right of it's going to be red, okay? And here I'm lucky, I've already got three pieces of red, so that's nice. So, with red, uh, now we have to think a little bit more even, because now we have this blue centerpiece here, uh, and we can mess that up too. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the red on top, okay, once again with the white and yellow on the sides, and we don't want the blue facing us, we want the other side. So I'm just going to show you a couple situations of how this red could be. Um, one is that you, this is the easiest it could be pretty much, except for solved, is that you've got the three and then just one uh, right next to it, which in that case you just top left, top left, rotate it down, into place, and back up. Uh, and that little move that I've been showing you does actually fix the blue in of itself. Uh, when, because since you're moving it down and then doing something over here and moving it back up, even though you do move the blue out of place, you're moving it right back. Another situation you could have 
is that uh, you have two red, and either these two red are here or on the bottom. Now, if it's on the bottom, you do like I showed you before and just rotate it up, out of the way, and back down. If it's here, uh, we have to think like I was talking about with the yellow side. You don't just move it into place like that and say, yay, the red's done, because the blue's out of place, and you have to get that back in place. So once again, what you have to do is you actually have to replace the red that you already have. So replace it like that. Then you move this out of the way. And then when you move it back down, you're fixing the red and the blue, just like that. So now we have four of the six uh, centers done. So uh, what's next after red? Well, you've got green and you have orange. Now the nice thing is, once you fix the green side, the orange will automatically solve. So uh, I'll, really, there's only one more center to solve here. And here it's very simple because you only have two sides. There's really not all that much can, that can happen. So in this case, we have the three like that, and it's already in the top left. We've got the uh, one here, and we orient that in the top left. And so we just go ahead and rotate the extra piece down, rotate that out of the way, rotate it back up. As uh, simple as that. If you have a double green here, and then the others down here, uh, once again, don't put it over here and into place. You have to replace what you already have, rotate that out of the way, and that fixes everything back into place. The only other situation you can have, pretty much, is that you have two greens, uh, but they're opposite from each other like this. And this also is very simple. All you're going to do is rotate either side down. Because of the way that uh, these checker patterns are, whether you rotate this side down or this side down, you're going to have an actual uh, good pair of greens. So I'll just do the right side, and now we've got this little pair right here. And so what we want to do is, since we've rotated the right side back down, we have to rotate the right side back up. So move these into the right side, because that's what's, you know, it's right back up. You move it up, and now we have three. So we're going to put at top left, we're going to put this top left, move down the extra, you know the drill for that. Uh, very simple. So that's all the uh, examples of what can happen with the green side, and once you've solved that, you've got the orange automatically, because that's the rest of the centers. So that is the first step, uh, solving all the centers, and we are on our way towards um, turning this into a 3x3. So after you have the center solved, you do not need to worry about them anymore as long as you're not doing any of this. Basically, any of this movement, it does not matter what you're doing, you're not going to mess up those centers because it's all on the outer edges. So you're going to spin them around, but nothing else is going to happen. So if you want to, you can even just do that a little bit to just let yourself know like nothing's going to mess them up. So the next step in solving the 4x4 is to pair up these edges. Uh, every one of these needs to be with their correct pair, and after that we can solve it like a 3x3. Three three. So you can see we already have a couple pairs here uh, just solved by luck, um, but the rest of them look like they're already unsolved. So uh, there's a very similar pattern that we're going to be doing for each of these, but I'm not going to give you an algorithm per se, because it's not really set in stone and there's some variations to it, so uh, I'll just explain it to you with logic. Uh, so first we need to find pairs to put together, and I like to start with white ones because uh, white seems to be the easiest to find. So here's a white and orange, and where's the other one? It's right there. So uh, what you want to do is you want to put the two pieces that you want to combine across from each other. So we're going to rotate that into place. But here's the thing. You have to have the pieces uh, opposite. So you want these pieces to be crisscrossed instead of directly across from each other like that. And so there's a very simple uh, little move that we're going to do. If it's not crisscrossed, then you're going to just do this. Uh, all it is is R, U, B prime, which is like this, R, R. And just like that, you've done that. And you can practice that a few times because really, it, if you get used to it, it's almost like one move. Uh, it's very fluid. It's R, U, B prime, R, R. Like you can you can put your fingers here and, and keep it through the whole thing. Uh, it's, it's just like a loop-de-loop. -loop. So we have to do that one more time to get it correct. R, U, B prime, R, R. Uh... And so once we have them across from each other, now this one could be on the top or this one can be on the bottom. It doesn't matter which, as long as they're uh, crisscrossed. Uh, what we're going to do is take the one on the right and we're going to move it to the one on the left. Uh, and so that's just going to be just like that, okay? And so now you see we have that uh, pairs correct, but we've messed up our centers. So obviously we have to move these centers back, but we don't want to mess this up. So the procedure here is what you're going to do is move it 
into the top layer, right? Uh, and don't worry about this, we're going to move it back down. And you're going to replace this with an already broken pair. So, like this one. But any of these three, as long as it's broken, uh, is fine. So, we'll just move this one in, okay? And then we're going to rotate these back down, like that. Now we've got a broken pair where our fixed pair was, and so we can rotate the centers back, just like that, okay? And uh, if that confused you, don't worry, we're going to do it like 15 more times, so uh, it's okay. So let's look for another pair, uh, white and red, and here's the other one. So just get them across from each other, and this time we're fortunate, uh, we've got them opposite. So remember, you take the one on the right, and you line it up with the one on the left, okay? Just like that. Once you've done that, you're going to uh, rotate it in the top layer to replace it, okay? You find a broken piece. Any of these three are okay, so I'll just use this one again. Move it to where this is. Rotate it back down. Double check to make sure that it is broken. And rotate the centers back into place. Just like that. It's really pretty simple. Once you get used to it, it's actually a, a simple idea. It's just kind of weird at first. Uh, so next pair. So let's just go ahead and do, say, yellow and green. So we've got one right here, and the other one's right next to it. So we can go ahead and rotate it uh, to where it's going to be across from it. So just put it into place. Um, and once again, we're lucky. Uh, we've got it to where they're opposite from each other, like that. So all we have to do is take the right piece and rotate it to where it's with the left. Rotate it into the top layer. Replace it with a broken pair, like this one. Rotate it back down, and fix the centers. Oops. Just like that. It's the same thing every time, until you start to get towards the end. So as you get more and more fixed pairs, uh, you'll actually start to run out of uh, broken pairs to replace these with. So like you see, these, this whole top layer is fixed. And so if we were to m mix up something right here and put it up, we wouldn't have anything broken to replace it with. So uh, when that happens, you basically just want to flip the cube and see now we've got more uh, broken pairs to work with. But first we need to uh, find another pair. So here we have orange and green, and orange and green, they're already crossed from each other, just like that. But we want them to be crisscrossed. So we're going to do our R, U, B prime, R, R. And now they're like we want them to be. So take the one on the right, put it with the one on the left, rotate it in the top layer, replace it with a broken pair. Now this time we can't use this one, so we're going to use this one will work. Rotate it back down, and fix the centers. Very simple. Um, so uh, what's next? Let's do blue and red. So we've got one right here, and we've got one right here. So I'm just going to move this over here, and into the spot, but you see we uh, have them right next to each other, so we have to R, U, B prime, R, R. So now we've got them in the right position, and now what we want to do is check. At this point, uh, sometimes you start to run out, so check on the top layer. Do we do I have something in these three, because this one's going to get replaced, uh, that I can replace it with? And yes, I've got a broken pair right here. So go ahead and take the right, put it with the left, rotate that into the top layer, Put the broken pair where it is, put it back down, and then replace the centers. Voila. And we and look at this. Uh, the broken pair that we put down in actually got fixed when we replaced the centers, so that's always nice. Okay, so this video is turning out to be extremely long because it's a very long tutorial, so go ahead and take this link to part two to finish this up.